you're in the market for a subcompact five passenger crossover, then the Kia Seltos should probably be on your list. Now, if this is your first introduction to this fairly new baby ute, then welcome. I'm going to tell you some things that you should know. But if you're not new and you're just here to find out what is new, then I'll point those things out too. Starting on the most obvious, the exterior. Personally, I've always been a fan of how it looks. Even if most of the small youths tend to look a bit similar, the Seltos has always appeared to come from a more expensive segment. So this is the new Nightfall Edition. On this one, you're gonna get all-wheel drive standard, 18-inch matte black alloy wheels, and some rugged-looking body cladding. The Seltos gets some fierce competition that includes the Subaru Crosstrek, Hyundai Kona, Mazda CX-30, Honda HRV and Toyota Corolla Cross. That aforementioned list of competitors all have a fairly similar base price. The Kia Seltos, $22,500, not including a destination charge. However, with the Seltos, you're going to have a little bit more interior space because it's a little bigger than the rest of them. And it also offers an impressive list of standard features. You'll get two engine options here, a base model 146 horsepower 2 liter 4 cylinder, or you can upgrade to a 1.6 liter turbocharged mill that puts up better power numbers. The turbocharged engine is only available on the new Nightfall Edition, yes, we've already mentioned that one, and the top of the line SX trim. If you're looking for more power and performance, then yes, you should be upgrading to that turbocharged engine, which honestly has a little more giddy up and go than you would probably expect. But that doesn't mean to say that the base engine is lackluster. In fact, when I compare it to others in the segment, it's actually, to me, feels a lot better. Uh, 146 horses isn't a ton, but don't forget, this is a small car that doesn't weigh a lot, so you're not really going to feel it quite as much. The other standard features that you get are solid, starting with all-wheel drive on the base model. Now, just to note, that base LX is only available in all-wheel drive. You cannot get it in front-wheel drive. The next highest trim, the S, you can get in either two- or all-wheel drive. That's the only level that lets you do that. Both the ES and SX, as well as the new Nightfall Edition, uh-huh, all come as all-wheel drive models. Other goodies you can expect for your money include an 8-inch infotainment touchscreen, remote keyless entry, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as some extra driver assistance features that now come standard with the Kia DriveWise suite and include lane departure warnings, forward collision warning, driver attention warning, high beam assist, lane keeping assist, and lane following assist. Both of those previous mentioned are excellent systems that don't feel overly intrusive, but can help a driver stay out of trouble. You can upgrade to higher trim levels and treat yourself to amenities such as an LED light bar, heated front Syntex seats, and a 10.25 inch touchscreen. That larger screen is now standard on all but the LX. Yes, that's new too. You can get a leather wrapped steering wheel, smart key with push button start, rear USB ports, and even wireless charging. But let's talk about what that means for the interior of the Seltos. First off, design I like. It's simplistic, but you get enough screen and buttons, a uh, good combination. I also think everything is really intuitively placed. The one thing I will say is this. This is not a super top of the line, so I'm glad about that. We get to see what most people will be purchasing. And I like some of the details here. They use different textures, different materials. There is a little bit of plastic, but for the segment, I understand that. Overall, I really like how the interior of the Seltos is laid out. The interface on the touchscreen isn't multi-layered, and it's got one of my favorite features that seems like it would be in a Mercedes. So remember when I said the Seltos was a little bit bigger than most of the other subcompacts? Well, here is where it pays off. As you can see, I've got a ton of room back here, both legroom and headroom. Also, and this is a nice feature too, there's a little bit of recline in the seat. 
Now, one more really quick thing that I just noticed. Remember when I talked about interesting shapes and textures? There's another one right there. They do a good job. Once you get the engine started, there aren't really diminishing returns here either. As far as road manners go, the Seltos feels really comfortable. It's composed around turns, and there isn't really anything that's terribly glaring about how the driving experience is. The one thing I will say, the cabin is really quiet and nice and fairly comfortable until you hit the throttle in the turbo. It does make a little bit of a raucous noise, um, but otherwise, I really have no complaints. I like the steering feel, it's not overly assisted, and the brakes, hmm, they feel solid. Check off a lot of boxes on your list when it comes to a subcompact crossover with the Seltos. The base model comes with a CVT. Now, you know my normal feelings about those, but truthfully, when people ask me what car they should buy, most people, they don't notice or they don't care. If you are a gearhead and it matters to you, um, then upgrade to that 1.2 liter uh, turbo because it does come with a seven speed dual clutch. But you know, the CVTs are getting so much more sophisticated these days and they work. They're a little bit more fuel efficient, and let's face it, right now, that is really important to a lot of people. Speaking of fuel economy, the numbers on the Seltos look solid. You won't even take that big a hit when you opt for the turbo. The top of the line SX trim will cost closer to $28,000 without Kia's $1,175 destination charge. So, some new things, yes that make an already impressive subcompact crossover even more so. Way to go, Kia Seltos. Keep it up.